Good morning guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So today you have Luna and I and we are going to give you a van tour and we are about halfway through the build, well through the time that we've got for the build. What are you going to show them? My bunk bed. Your bunk bed? Come on. I Is that where we're starting? Well, no. No. So we will show you Luna's bunk bed in a little bit, but let's show you the rest of the van. Yay. So we bought this Mercedes Vario as a fully converted van but we didn't like the layout, we didn't know what was going on underneath and if you've seen any of our previous videos you will know that it was lucky that we ripped everything out because the whole chassis was broken and it was dangerous. So here at the back of the van we have treated all the rust that was here, we've taken out the big rusty window and we have put in this beautiful stable door. So as much as we love this stable door it has been a absolute pain so we love the wood effect but obviously the wood and all the water that we've had this summer has not been a good good combination this is definitely a work in progress and this is the other change that we've done is we've put in this circular window this window opens it's beautiful i'm sure you've seen on other videos but this is my absolute favorite window in the van and we've added this kitchen window here which both windows open and then add a really nice three breeze when we open them both up that with the max fan that we put on the ceiling which i can't get up there so i can't show you so it's gonna have a really good air throw all the way through the van and keep us nice and cool in hot countries so let's go into the cab and i'll show you what we've done in there so inside this bus the first thing i'm going to show you is the cab area so we haven't actually done that much at the moment We've taken all the metal cabinets and stuff out and then we are putting it all, we've insulated it all, vapor buried it and now we're adding wooden cabinets in. We've installed a little cup holder thing which is only temporary, we're going to do a much better job later on. We've also carpeted the sides so they were like a horrible like blue colour, weird colour carpet but we've made them a really nice like sort of black grey. We've treated the metalwork and we've kind of opened it all up. So it was, it did have a bed above us but actually you kind of you got in and you felt really really cramped so we've opened it all up we're going to have some wooden boxes above our heads and then we're going to have some plants and things to be able to put like drinks and stuff and just you know all the crap that you need while you're driving or you don't really need it while you're driving but it's useful to have it so these are the metal beams behind us that we're going to keep exposed and then have wooden boxes in here so that's where we're going to put all our stuff this is going to be turned into a cupboard the same as on the other side oh you're going to get dizzy so this so this at the moment is a piece of ply but it's all boarded out behind so that it can become a cupboard at later date. There is a running theme here of stuff that is going to be done at later date. But apart from that we have painted the doors black, made the cup holder like I said and that is about all that we've done in the cab. But it feels so much more spacious now whoop, I can stand up and sit down without kind of like ducking under the bed. So stepping through from the cab around a piece of ply and over the flooring that we are going to put down. This is the reality of doing a self-built camper van conversion. Is that you're constantly stepping over, ducking under and in our case having bits of wood fall on our heads. On the left the first thing that you're going to be is the shower room and the toilet. You guys right now where the camera is will be in the middle of our toilet. Lucky you. We are having a composting loo. We have gone for a simp loo, uh, which we actually found on Facebook Marketplace. So super pleased with that. Getting brand new and cheaper. So behind me, this is where the shower is going to go and it is not boarded out. We haven't even made the frame yet. This is not fixed, hence the wood falling on our heads. And then if I just pan it over from there, this is where the kids seats are. This is actually one of the first things that we ever put in. Obviously, we need the kids to be safe when we are traveling. So they have got a very, very safe, certificated, all the rest kind of seat to go in. There's no cushions on it at the moment, so that will come and it will get boarded out. And underneath their seats is all our electrics are going to go there so that we can access it. If anything ever goes wrong, it means that we can access everything that we need to do. I mean, at the moment, there's just a big bag of clothes that need to go to a charity shop, but hey. Okay, so this is the kids' seats and the shower area, and then I'm sat on the front steps at the moment. Woo, hi, that's why the light is so good. And then behind me is our kitchen. So, it is a little bit like a giant kitchen, and we are umming and ahhing on whether it's too tall. Obviously, our bus is quite high, so you have to step up some steps, and then you've got this giant kitchen in front of you, so it looks ginormous. We have ummed and ahhed about putting a IKEA kitchen in here because it's easy, it's convenient. As you've seen on my last video, which I will put whoop, a link somewhere here. Do you love a bit of Ikea? But we have 
gone with the ply theme of everywhere else and we have created our own kitchen frame at the moment. So this kitchen frame is made out of 9mm ply and the battens but on top of our kitchen at the moment our work surface is made of two bits of 12mm ply. And the reason why we're keeping it like that is because we are going to micro cement our work surface as well as in the bathroom we want to micro cement the bathroom to give it that like moroccan harem no not a harem what's it called a moroccan a, mo... <laughs> a moroccan anyway a moroccan spa kind of feel which i think that micro cement thing will do but either it's a really rubbish idea because there aren't that many people that do it or we're onto an ingenious idea and it's going to be beautiful. So if you have micro cemented anything, whether it's in a van or not in a van, I don't care, um, please can you let us know so we can ask you all the questions about it. But we are going to be micro cementing, sorry my ramble, we are going to be micro cementing this work surface. So it's going to give a really nice like kind of like soft rounded but still water resistant and stain resistant and odor resistant kind of surface to be our work surface and we're going to use these 24 mil ply as our base for it and then on the end of the work surface here we're going to have another bit that raises up which is going to be my work area for working i am a silversmith so i am going to be making more jewelry on the road again which i'm really really excited to do because all of my jewelry is based around our travels and actually I'll put a link in the description so if you would like to get some ethical silver jewellery that is based around van life and travels then you know just follow that link. I mean hey if you can't plug your business on your own YouTube channel where can you plug your business? Then this box that is just sitting on top of our work surface it's actually going to be our charging cabinet so it's where we are going to put our camera our laptop things like that and it's going to have all the electrics running to it. It's going to go above the kids seats so it's going to be close to our kind of like main electric portal my god that sounds a little like we're gonna start zapping people our main electric portal but anyway that's where it's gonna go and it's gonna be really useful so we can put all our stuff in there so it can charge and we can know where it is so i've got the kitchen over here to the left of me i've got jokers to the right oh my god i'm so old that reference is so old anyway above me here we have got all our open shelving i'm going to be stood on what is going to be our sofa area we still don't know whether we're going to do an l-shaped sofa or two kind of line sofas but above us here these shelves are going to stay open like this with all our beautiful like hessian kind of like is it hessian god i've forgotten all words today um are that jute jute anyway whatever that material is i love it don't know what it's called but i love it so we've got all of these going to be open with some copper piping to keep it in, which is going to be like our accent colour in our bus. So this is me stood with my back to the beds looking up the van. And you can see the kitchen to the right, the very messy steps that we come in on the left. And then as we walk forward, go past the kitchen where the sink, the cooker and everything will be. Kids seats there and the cupboard is going to go up there. And then on the right here is where our shower room and everything is going to be. So Luna's kind of missed out most of this tour, but let me spin you around. What have you got, Luna Rose? Jenga. So this is Luna's Jenga, which is the offcuts of wood, obviously. But what have you got to do to stop them having splinters, Luna? Sandpaper. So she's got some sandpaper and she is slowly sanding down these blocks to make into building blocks. Wow! <laughs> right, Missy, show them your bunk. Where is your bunk? In my bunk. So, on top of our bed, well, next to our bed, we have Bailey's bunk under here. And then on top here, we have Luna's bunk bed with a giant cardboard box on at the moment. But should we move that when you sleep? Yeah. Yeah, okay, we'll move that when you sleep. But what is so special about your bunk bed, Luna? There. That is pink. Let's go behind you here. The famous pink glittery wall. And look what is at the bottom of Bodhi. And you want to show them that bit as well? Yeah. Okay, so we've got Luna's bunk at the top here. And then we've got Bodhi's bunk here, which when we put our proper mattress onto our bed, it will be kind of the same height as ours, which means that we can still co sleep. But when he gets a bit older, we'll be able to change it so he's got his own space. Luna, show them what's underneath. It's going to be easier once there's steps and a sofa there. I mean, we've basically just built a climbing frame for them. 
Okay, so where do we need to go? Under here. Oh. Play cave. So what's this going to be? A play cave. It's going to be a play cave. And what are you going to store at the back there? Toys. All your toys. And then what's going to go on this wall here? Books. All your books are going to go on this wall. So you're going to be able to access them. Toys at the back. And then what kind of lights are you having in here? Colourful lights. Multicoloured lights? No way. Yeah. It's going to be like a little serene area for them to read, for chill out, to play. All of this area by this massive window. I mean, the view isn't that great at the moment because it is Stephen Lynn's motorhome from the Roaming Radfords. <laughs> but all of this massive window and this at the bottom there is going to be left open. And so they're going to have loads of room to play. So when Luna was showing you her bunk bed, you may have seen our grown-up bed and I'm going to call it a grown-up bed because if you have kids and you 100% know that it's just going to be a big family bed with everyone trying to snuggle in the middle but you might have thought that bed is weirdly short let me show you the ingenious design that is this bed this is the kids bunk beds that we have already shown you and then this here underneath the ply obviously and it's going to have a full mattress on is going to be our bed but it's really short this is where the bed gets super snazzy. So we are gonna have steps down here to get up onto the bed for us and the kids, sofa next to it, but you've got four little levers here. One, two, three, four, and out comes the bed. <gasps> Look at that. Look at that. So the foot of our bed actually extends. So it pulls out a good couple of feet and talking about feet this is only where your feet are going to go but we have got such strong runners that you can actually I mean I can't uh, you can actually put all your weight on the end of these beds they're on heavy duty drawer runners so that the whole end of the bed will come out and it will go over where the sofa is but it means that we can have a full size king bed in our van without taking up loads of room and it also locks out like this as well so if I lean on it nothing is going to happen there same as bringing it out you just push these little levers down. And then that is all locked in place as well. And that won't come out when traveling. Underneath here, I mean, look, loads of piles of ply. But actually, if we go up, you can kind of see how the bed mechanism works. Is that we've got fixed slats on the bit that extends. And the bit at the back there, you can see they've all kind of concertinaed up. And that's how we managed to make the slats slide back in. So that's how we are fitting a full-size king bed and two single, well, a bit smaller than single, and two bunk beds into our bus build. Have I done everything? You've seen the kids' seats, you've seen the shower room that doesn't exist, you've seen the kitchen, pull-out bed, pretty much I've done this whole video just to show you the pull-out bed. Play down. So we've done a lot of building we're really really pleased with it and we kind of now need to get those final touches in we also need to sort out all the electric and the plumbing and things and that is our next job because actually we have no plumbing and no electric at the moment so they are our next kind of big jobs to tick off the list and get this bus livable in because on september the 16th we are going to the adventure overlander show where we will be in the YouTube village so you can come and say hi and we can show you this build and we can just generally chat to you all, which I would love. So please drop us a comment if you are going to the Adventure Overlander show, if you would like to see this build and what you would have done differently. Would you have done anything differently in this build? Probably lots. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But for now, this is us done. So if you have liked this fan tour and you want to see more of this build, then please like, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you at the Adventure Overlander and Camper Fan Show on September the 16th. But for now, bye!